there is a certain amount of assumption that people make when they see a woman and then they get surprised that, oh, you know, this, this is not what I was expecting. There are several women working uh, within the region in marine sciences, and I'm one of them. What I like best in my job, uh, wow, it's uh, to meet people and to, to meet also coral reef fishes. It's a unique field. It's not crowded like, uh, uh, let's see, being an accountant. Every day I'm doing something new. The traveling, the uh, connection with the other people, it's, it's really good. And the teaching as well. I like the, the feeling of helping uh, students uh, to broaden their vision. Marine science does not pay like a business job would do. And so the women that do choose to stay in marine science are women that are passionate. I have uh, supervised a lot of students from locally and also from abroad and uh, they've been doing a lot of work which has benefited uh, not only Wyomsa but the country in general. Well, I work for Kenya Wildlife Service. The rangers would salute you or whatever and especially once I got to the, a very senior level. They used to saying sir, so they'd confuse, they'd say sir and then say madam. <laughs> but it didn't upset me. I didn't feel like they were doing it because they were trying to be, be discriminated. It's just that that's what they're used to and then they got used to the other way. But I, I do remember one time we were going scuba diving and the rangers were all like carrying my tank and you know, like see if I, I needed to be protected or something like that. And when we got on board and I was diving, when we came back, they were like, okay. From the beginning, I knew I wanted to do something in the sea because I feel that very big connection with the sea. I've always been, one, a tomboy, two, love to be outdoors. And my mother was uh, a dean at the University of Dar es Salaam and she used to take us about to the beach. I get into marine science uh, as I was a child. I grew up near Coral Reef at Reunion Island, where, where I was born. And at that time, they also had these uh, Jacques Cousteau documentaries. There was much to watch on TV, but the documentaries were really good. And I, I didn't know that I wanted to have a career in marine sciences. I didn't even know there was such a thing as marine sciences, but I was very attracted by the ocean. I was inspired by uh, Commandant Cousteau. It was, for, for me, a um, magical and a mysterious uh, underwater world. I went to marine sciences by chance because that was my second option when I applied for high school and then I fell in love with it. That's how I became a scientist. The lack of having the skills that I needed and, uh, and also not having the particular knowledge that I needed. And that it wasn't challenges in my high school. It was not easy for me to learn how to swim. I had to go to swim at special times eh, when there were no men around. Of course, now things are changing. Of course, being in a developing country, there are always those issues of trying to find a scholarship. It's not so, so, so easy. But overall, I think I, have, I had a very good uh, supporting system at home and within the, the university as well. We have projects with women community members who are doing seaweed farming, but they don't know how to swim. So we are trying also to, to teach them how to swim so that they can do their work without depending on the men. So it was a kind of a challenge, but I went through it. Before I went to do my master's, I was working with the Kenya Marine Fisheries Research Institute as a marine scientist. And there we had technicians. And so if you collected a sample of water, the technician would analyze it for you. If you needed to go out in the field, there was a car and a driver. When I went to Florida, all that you have to do yourself. But I think it was very good because it taught me to, to think creatively, to learn the things that I needed to do to, to, you know, to, get, to get by. I don't think it's a challenge to be a woman in marine science, it's just a challenge to be a woman in science. You know, the society, not tell, but nearly tell that uh, science, it's, it's reserved to men. Very few women are willing to step up into the leadership roles. And that begins to present a problem because if I'm not growing leaders behind me, uh, then I have no one to step into the shoes in the future. In my career, I have not felt that because of being a woman, I have been marginalized or, or discriminated against in, in, in any way. Another challenge that comes up is uh, motherhood. 
When I became a mother, I, rem I felt I had lost two years uh, of work time. You know, I had a very strong mother and uh, we grew up with a sense that, well, she has achieved, so we couldn't see a limit to our achievement. Um, and so I've always felt that the limitation for me is me, not, not so much the system. The challenge is to keep their passion intact. The challenge is to keep them motivated. I think it's important to encourage women to, uh, to trust them and to give them this uh, power to believe on themselves. Often the limit is many in your mind. There's a lot of skills that we learn that are not necessarily taught in school. So figure out the skills that you need and even as you're in school, start working on those skills. You need to build your confidence, go to trainings, try to go beyond what you think you can do and things will come. They have to be faithful, they have to be available and they have to be teachable. If they are teachable and they, they listen to advice, they will go far. When they are doing something or research, they have to do it uh, with uh, a strong will, they, to be dedicated, to, it, to do it well. Because things that are done well are producing good results. Work hard and uh, believe in your star and it's the best way to, to get close to it. I think that you get a better perspective of the environment you're studying when you can interact physically with it. Be there you know, be in the water, see what's happening. I would tell any woman who wants to be a marine scientist to take it on because it's possible. That they should put uh, their best foot forward, participate. Once you show some element of participation, then everything will fall into place. I enjoy mentoring young scientists. Uh, we, as elders, we feel we know a lot. But when you give the work to the young ones, they come out with ideas and things which uh, I didn't think about. So it helped me a lot. And I've written a lot of papers by linking with these uh, young scientists. Uh, I was involved and I'm still involved in mentoring a young, young uh, woman scientist. And I think it's important to, to be close to young women, uh, to, to make them trust to them and uh, just help them when there's a problem. I've been fortunate enough to be uh, part of the African Women in Research and Development in Agriculture, and that is uh, funded by uh, Bill Gates Foundation. They pick ladies from 11 African countries, and I was fortunate enough to be a fellow in the 2013 uh, cohort. And, and I think it's important that women mentor girls and boys, because I think that we can't solve the gender problem through empowering only one gender. We need to empower both. I feel that somebody who grows up seeing a woman of a certain status, whether they are a boy or a girl and they are being mentored by them, when they grow up, they will sort of take on that sort of very open perspective which I have and which I think is one of the biggest ways that we can deal with the gender issues too bring up generation of people who have a, a very open perspective. So from uh, my mentorship, I also learned how to help uh, someone else to have a ripple down effect. It's good to be a marine scientist.